from HanselMinutes.com. It's Hansel Minutes, a weekly discussion with web developer and technologist Scott Hanselman. This is Lawrence Ryan announcing show number 402, recorded live Thursday, December 12th, 2013. This episode of Hansel Minutes is brought to you by Telerik, offering the best in developer tools and support. Online at T-E-L-E-R-I-K.com. And by Franklins.net, makers of GesturePack, a powerful gesture recording and recognition system for Microsoft Connect for Windows developers. Details at GesturePak.com. In this episode, Scott talks with Hadi Hariri about making software for the greater good. Hi, this is Scott Hanselman. This is another episode of Hansel Minutes, and I'm here in Australia, actually at the Yao Conference in Sydney at the University of New South Wales. And I'm sitting with uh, Hadi Hariri. How are you? I'm good, thanks, Scott. How are you? Doing pretty good. Doing pretty good. Uh, you gave your talk earlier today, and uh, I hear that it went very well, and that's exciting. Yeah, yeah, it was good. That's good. Good, good. Yeah. good. And we're both going to go home soon. I know we were definitely looking forward oh, to yeah. that. Oh, yeah. After two weeks being out here, <laughs> it's yeah. uh, time to go home. I'm ready to go. Now, you and I were talking yesterday, and you had uh, some, some ideas that you seemed really excited about. And I said, well, we need to stop talking and start recording. Yeah. So now we're here. Yeah. What do you got? So yeah, I mean this is um this is it's it's something that I've been thinking about for a while, right? Um I was uh it's I mean I'll give you a little bit of a background. I did I gave a talk in um DDD Brisbane that we're here now, you know, when we're in Brisbane. And um the the title of the talk was Developing in a Decade. And the talk came out of a couple of months ago. They they pinged me um from a conference in Norway, uh Trondheim developer conference to give a keynote there and they said you know talk about the trends in 2018 and you know i started to think like i mean i've been having these thoughts in the back of my mind about where we're heading as an industry and i kind of focused the talk more around my my thoughts around where we're heading as an industry as opposed to where we're heading from a technical perspective Mm -hmm. right and it was it was around the idea of you know what are we doing us as developers in 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 ways of improving the world mm-hmm. you know i mean you hear day and night that the startup culture and the startups in you know in the valley and everything they're like getting these um venture capitalism and venture capital money and investments to um invent new ways to for people to communicate and to do great things. You, I mean, you hear about Instagram, you hear about Facebook, all of these things, right? Mm-hmm. And you start to think like, okay, how exactly, you know, are these companies changing the world? Well, I mean, they're just making it easier for teenagers to share pictures, I guess. Yeah. Um, so, you know, and, but it's become like, you look at like, you know, um, Apple, or and Steve Jobs, right? Mm-hmm. Um, you know, with the iPhone, yeah, he absolutely did change the world. Oh yeah, right? no oh question. yeah, he did. Um, but my what what I started to say, uh, ask myself, is the the why, right? Because you think of the the what, you know, we know how to do things. You, you think of the how, you know, what to do things, you know, how to do things. But you, I think we've forgotten the why. Like, mm-hmm. why is it that we're doing some things that we're doing? And then these kind of thoughts were combined with you know over the last decade or so i mean remember how we had the industrial revolution right and they said well you're going to increase productivity right mm-hmm. so you know um people are going to spend less time doing repetitive work and the, and the industry is going to you know industrial uh, revolution promoted the the you know working faster and better more efficiently and it would create more jobs. And lately I'm thinking like, are we creating more jobs with our industry or are we destroying jobs at a faster rate than mm-hmm. we are creating? And it still seems like in some, even in the glamorous world of software engineering, there's a whole class of developer that's really just doing repetitive work. Yeah. Just snapping things together. Yeah. 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 Um, so, you know, I, combining that, combining, you know, that idea of are we actually creating more jobs, combining the idea of, you know, now with all of the, um, things that are going on with the internet and, you know, the whole uh, uh, spying and keeping an eye on us and stuff like that. And I just started to wonder, like, where where the hell are mm-hmm. we heading? You know, just where are we heading? Well, it does make one wonder, you know, if we've kind of lost our way, like, as a, as a culture. And I mean culture, I mean humankind. Yeah. 
what exactly are we trying to accomplish here? It seems like, you know, there's Western culture, which is really much trying to worry about oneself and one's family. So there's kind of these circles of, of, of influence. There's myself, there's my family, there's my extended family, and there's my, you know, neighborhood. And we always talk about in the States, at least, about how we don't know our neighbors anymore. Yeah. And I think about all the things that are happening in America that uh, are enabling me to have a better life. But I don't really think about whether what my actions or the things that I work on make my life better for my neighbors or my community, things like that. Yeah. And then you hear about places like, is it, was it Tibet? Who, 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 what's the place with the National Happiness Index? Like the, the present. Oh, it was Macedonia, I think. It was like. Really? I Mas- it was like Nepal or Tibet. But you know what I'm saying? That was someone who has a National Happiness Index. And they, like at the highest levels of government, they're like, are we happy as a country? You know what I mean? I feel oh, like then it wasn't. Ma- no, I, I saw a recent poll that Macedonia was like the 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 friendliest, nicest place in the world to live. Really? Yeah. Yeah. Um, and then they, so they they clearly must be doing something right. Yeah. And they're focusing on uh, doing the right thing. Yeah. It also makes one think about all of, all of the people in the Bay that are doing, um, like I said, photo sharing and things like that. But then the platforms that we've forgotten about, like uh, there's um, Ushadi. I think it's a it's a platform for sharing information in Africa for getting information about getting out the vote, getting out information about, uh, you know, how to connect people who have low bandwidth and yeah. all those kind of things. Those are small projects with small budgets. Yeah. Even tiny, uh, you know, when Instagram is a billion dollars and projects like Ushadi or like there's a, there's a really great project run by Martin Benjamin that's setting up a, a universal African language dictionary so that people can translate with SMS if they have a question about a dictionary word and they can translate between Swahili and Zulu or English and yeah. whatever. Their budgets are measured Nothing in the thousands is, yeah. of dollars. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But, and that's, that's, that's where I started to look at, right? Because I, I started to think, okay, we have, um, I mean, you know, this, it's, a, it was like a whole combination of things that were coming in at the same time for me, right? Thinking about, what it is that we're doing. I mean, you know, I got into this and I think the vast majority of people got into this, in, into the, you know, computers because I started to love solving problems. And then when I started to see how the way I was solving problems was actually helping people get their job done faster. Okay, quite superficial or whatever you have, but I started to say, this is cool. I can actually sense a little bit of like, you know, happiness in someone because what I've done is kind of help them, right? Mm-hmm. So... This combined with, you know, where are we heading? I mean, I'm, you know, I, you know me, I live in Spain and mm-hmm. Spain right now, the, the econo, the financial crisis is really, it's taken a battering. And, you know, there's, I see so many homeless. I see so many people in, with, with, with problems and, um, and that, and it's just all started to come together. And then there was, there was this other factor, which was the internet of the social networks and so much information. You know, we are, we are being bombarded by information, mm-hmm. right? And I recently read a book, which was, um, it was called Amusing Ourselves to Death, mm-hmm. right? Which is by Neil Postman. And this was back in 1984. And he was saying basically how, I mean, you've all heard, we've all heard of. He wrote it in 84? In 84. Okay. I don't, I, I'm interested to hear what this is about, but even the title is quite prescient. Yeah. Uh, you know what I mean? Yeah. Oh, and, and by the way, before I forget, it's actually, uh, Ushahidi. Is the the open source system in Africa I was thinking about? So yep. Neil Postman wrote this book. Yeah, he wrote this book called "Amusing Ourselves to Death," and and the idea behind it, he was he was attacking the the like the TV basically, right? And he was saying how, um, in in particular, American society as has been promoting this um, entertainment or infotainment, as you will, on TV. Mm-hmm. You know, I mean, basically, with this, he said with the Telegraph, you started to become aware of things that had absolutely no relevance for you you know somewhere across the other side of america something had happened and it started to come out in like news daily news mm-hmm. you know exactly and and he, you you look at the news today and they say you know that the the reporter the journalist they're like you know seven thousand people have died in a flood um in in africa and now for something completely different <laughs> in other news <laughs> yes exactly. no americans were killed yes and um you know um justin bieber's coming to town you know, one of the most dramatic, and again, I'm speaking from an American perspective and you're speaking from someone who lives in Spain, but one of the most dramatic things I think that Americans should look at is the international covers of Time magazine. This is done on a regular basis. Time magazine is published all over, Newsweek, things like that. If you look at the covers, uh, when the tsunami, uh, not the tsunami, but the typhoon happened in the Philippines, yeah. there was like nine international editions of the magazine. Eight of them had the exact same cover concerned about the typhoon. And the American one 
mentioned nothing about the typhoon, and it had a completely different cover. Yeah. And the argument is, well, it wouldn't sell yeah. if it was focused on, on you know, important news, arguably. Yeah, but I mean, it's not only America. I mean, you get this everywhere, right? right? And so anyway, he wrote this book about, you know, how we are like degrading as a culture, mm -hmm. right? And how we are lost in a sea of information, right? And he was quoting a guy uh, that you probably know, this was um, in 1932, uh, Aldous Huxley mm -hmm. wrote a book called Brave New World. Where basically he, there was this drug called Soma and people were created in test tubes, well, artificially created. Who would have thought back yeah. in 32 he would think this? And they would give them different levels of intelligence so that, you know, they wouldn't complain. And people were on constantly in orgy porgies and having like sex every day from, from small age and taking this drug, but everyone was happy. No one needed books. Everyone was happy, right? Nobody looked outside of the box. Everyone was continuously but is it, is it some larger system that's causing people to do that? Like, are they being controlled by a... They were being controlled. The population was being controlled, right? Mm -hmm. they, 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 were, they were controlling the population because they were worried about overpopulation. And they were just, you know, society was controlled. Mm -hmm. And there was, uh, and the powers that be, it was called the, the Fordians, um, were, uh, basically making sure that people wouldn't step outside of, of this, of this uh, continuous entertainment. So what Neil Postman was saying is whether, you know, we were so worried about um, Orwell and this control and this bro mm -hmm. brother, mm -hmm. you know, that they would ban books, whether that was really our concern versus more of a Huxley society where, the no where nobody even cares about books, you know? That makes me think of two different images. The first one being the movie Idiocracy, if you've ever seen that. Uh, yeah. Basically, the idea is uh, to put it into a, an, into a really simple uh, example. One of the opening scenes is a person in a like a, a lounge chair, and he's leaned back, and he's got a giant full screen TV in front of him, giant television, maybe you know multiple meters long. Yeah. Except it's entirely covered in advertising, and the full the actual screen size is quite small. It's it's framed almost as if it is advertise and it's just reality tv 24 hours a day and the person has become so immensely fat that he can't move basically and he's just you know drinking coke <laughs> and watching his ads and then that uh, makes you think about uh, was it the movie was it um wally yeah i remember and all of the people that they discovered were uh the, was it was it wally it was one of those movies where basically everyone had forgotten how to walk they were all hovering around like in segways because they were just continuously entertained continuously fed had absolutely no purpose other yeah. than to just simply be yeah and and this is written back in 1932 right yeah, yeah, yeah. and so so you take his thoughts of tv and then now you think about like you know what we have now today mm -hmm. we have facebook we have twitter we have well there's a couple of people on google plus you know it's like <laughs> yeah, there's, yeah there's so much information coming and you know I, there was recently a, a blog post which was the 29 um steps of a twitter storm which is basically someone does something wrong someone says oh this is bad someone else retweets it someone gets angry a famous people hooks onto it um the the politicians get wind and this whole you know storm goes on and the next day something absolutely mm -hmm. new comes and along and everyone's forgotten about it. It. and someone yeah. invented a hashtag yeah, game, exactly. You know, yeah, and that's it. And you know, no, no actual action has occurred. No, nothing is fixed. Well, there's been a couple of petitions, and but nobody f follows up with the petitions. You know right, what I'm saying? Right, right. And that's that's kind of like where 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 we've we we're we're kind of heading. We just it's just like you know, it's not, everything's becoming irrelevant to us. You know what I'm saying? So what what do we do to fix that? Well, <laughs> I, a buddy of mine saw someone sitting in a, uh, a line in a queue, and he said he didn't have his phone out. I hope he's okay. <laughs> <laughs> So exactly. I've actually been consciously, it's a tiny thing, but I've been consciously trying when waiting in line in a queue yeah. to put my phone in my pocket and just sit there and just be yeah. like we were five years ago like before we the iPhone five years ago when, was invented. You know, exactly. We've forgotten how to do that. Yeah. So how do we fix this? Well, I mean, there's, you know, I'm, I'm trying to take those little steps myself, right? And they're little steps. But what I'm, what I'm trying to think is, you know, with all this information that we have and with what we're seeing in the world, how can we actually try and do good, right? Use this information. Use this, mm -hmm. you know, the next big thing is big data, right? Use this for good. Are you thinking in, ch in the context of charitable works? Not not only charitable works. I'm trying to figure out how us... So here's the, th here's the thing. I mean, to boil this down, what the hell has this got to do with all of us? I feel that as developers, we have had quite a good, you know, a, a, a good position and our 
quite responsible for a lot of the innovation that's happened. Sure. Right. Because a lot mm-hmm. of the hardware innovation has been accompanied by software innovation. Okay. So we are, you know, we are in a very good position right now. Mm-hmm. Right. In society. To influence society. To influence. Okay. And what I want to know is what I feel is that I think that we're partially also responsible in shaping society. Okay. Software engineers, you think? Software engineers. Okay. Right. So what I'm starting to question is why are we doing some things and how can we do some things that instead of just saying the model of change the world, actually help the world. Okay. So what are some things that you think we're doing that unhealthy? You said like just making random photo sharing and like social apps, like chasing the dollar. Chasing the dollar, right? Ultimately, it comes down to if, if, if our model has become, you know, all I want to do is, you know, come up with an idea, get a million people signed up and sell it off to some VC. Mm-hmm. I mean, what have I done? Right? What have I, yeah, I've you become looked a million. Up, you looked out for yourself, you've a million I bucks. I looked out for, yeah, you but you know, and that's very respectable. I, I've got a family, you got a family, and we all got to, you got to take care of our family, right? Take sure. care of our own. But I'm, 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 you know, I want to, start to look beyond that Mm -hmm. right and so but the problem here is that you say well you can't stifle innovation you can't stifle the you know someone wanting to progress and you know be an entrepreneur and i started to look on the internet of if there is a possibility to try and combine these things you know what i'm saying if there's a possibility to innovate to to be to be everything you can but at the same time try and help people well wouldn't that be something like if i wanted to do that let's say you and i have decided to quit our jobs and we're going to do that i would think that i would go to work for like the gates foundation or warren buffett or one of these kind of like massive billionaire philanthropists yeah and try to make some fundamental change yeah but i don't think you necessarily have to do that i think that each of us can take little steps to help Right. I don't think that I have to tomorrow quit my job and go and do something else because it would be very preaching and hypocritical of me to sit here and say, okay, well, but wait, you're working for JetBrain selling tools and, um, and you're telling us that, you know, we should do something more, um, valuable. But I think that each of us as an individual, um, we should help. At least, at least start to think about okay, this, right? So let's boil it down to something actionable. Actionable. So I started to look on the internet and I started to see some of these things. Like, for example, you mentioned that, uh, that project. And I started to find entrepreneurs that had, for example, there was, there's a, there's this organization in, in Africa that has, um, there were two guys seeing that people that had AIDS and diseases, right, were waiting months to get any kind of medication because of the bureaucracy. Mm-hmm. So they put their knowledge to use. They made a system that allowed the the government to process data faster so that these people can get their um, medicine faster. Mm-hmm. There's another girl I met recently that has set up a company in, in India that she's using the simple concept of text messages uh, because in India, you know, they, it's hard for people to buy fresh fruit. It's expensive. So what they do is they coordinate via text messages when they get enough people to want to buy fresh fruit, the supplier comes in, sells them fresh fruit at a lower rate. Mm-hmm. They get fresh fruit at a fraction of the price, mm-hmm. right? And these are ways that, you know, we can actually use this vast infrastructure that we have, this so much information that we have to try and improve the lives of those that really need it Mm -hmm. you know i mean recently you saw twitter had like you know sold for i don't know what whatever it's been valued at whatever you mean the ipo of twitter yeah yeah of course and you go to sorry not sold the ipo has gone public and you've been to san francisco you walk down market street where twitter is you walk down two blocks it's it's homeless people it's homeless people it's drug addicts it's 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 just like you know that that whole concept of you know entrepreneurs create money that trickles down and gives investment to the to the to others Um, Uh, it doesn't doesn't work in the san francisco that i've seen (laughs) indeed san francisco is one of the most dramatic examples of uh, uh, of literally seeing you know billionaires stepping over the homeless as they kind of on their way to work and it's been it it is difficult to see um so you know i don't i don't know i mean i don't have the answers of saying you know what is the next immediate action that we mm-hmm. can take i i'm i'm starting to you know i've i've been doing a couple of uh things myself um in in the ways i can help um but i'm not saying that we should stop what we're doing mm-hmm. what i'm starting to what i'm saying is that we should start to ask why mm-hmm. Why are we doing it? And how, instead of just saying, I'm changing the world, I'm making the next startup to change the world, is how can I actually help those that need help? Now, do you think this is work that we're supposed to do on the side? Like, you work for JetBrains, I work for Microsoft. Do we do that? Like, we, I, now I do open source. Uh, on the side, maybe I should be talking to charities, helping them data mine, 
uh, do open source that is in a in a directed way. I think yeah, I think that this is something that I'm personally doing on the side, mm-hmm. um, and you know. If I, if I can do more, I can do more. If, if one day I, I get to do more that I can impact more people's lives, I'll be happy because ultimately that, I think that that's one of the biggest fulfillments someone can have mm-hmm. is how you impact other people's lives. So when you put this into the context of what we originally talked about, which was the idea of what are software engineers going to be doing in the next five years, 10 years? Yeah. I keep hearing you come back to the idea of data and helping those that are underprivileged get information and uh, access to services that maybe they didn't already have. It seems to me like like uh, connecting people is one aspect of this, uh, you know, like whether it be text messages or low bandwidth or enabling older devices to do things that you know, they couldn't do before. And then there's also uh, providing context uh, to people uh, that, that is trapped in some database somewhere. Yeah. Um, you know, connecting... Uh, whether it be marketplaces like a fruit vendor in one country with a fruit vendor in the next city over, or whether it be uh, just fixing a fixing a broken bureaucracy so that someone could get in line. Of yeah, course, I mean, healthcare.gov is not a good example of that. Yeah. But. <laughs> but there's more examples. I mean, there's there's another site that basically connects um, Fortune 500 companies with skilled workers that are out of a job, mm-hmm. right, in the U.S., Right. And you sign up, you say, I've got this skill, and the Fortune 500 company, avoiding recruiters, everything goes directly to you and says, okay, here. I've got this job for you. You want it? This rate, whatever. Done. Right? There's there's so many ways. I'm just saying we should start to think a little bit. Mm-hmm. And you know, and the other day, you know, this is again combined with the fact that all we're doing is innovating, 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 and wondering where is this going, right? Because like I, I was in Minneapolis uh, recently on a stopover. I step out of the airport and I see uh, the the restaurants in the terminal, everyone with a um every table with two iPads, right? two iPads. And I'm like, okay, these people like to surf. Right? I looked it up. Every restaurant there, actually, as I walked, had iPads on them. Is this a thing that the airport does for their restaurants? or? Well, turns out that basically what they've done is they've put iPads there, not only for people to surf, but to make orders. So you sit at the table, you make your order, and then you go, you collect your food or whatever, and you can surf. And you pay that. How many waiters did we just put out of a job you know what i'm saying yeah i don't know if that's innovation that's just kind of rearranging deck chairs on the <laughs> titanic <laughs> but yeah but that does have an impact on people yeah that's a funny one i think that i could see i could see arguments both ways like when someone goes and does something like that and you say hey look it's innovation uh well you know how many how much how many tons of silicon silicone uh, silicon rather were pulled out of the earth to make an iPad and then, you know, to put, the, put 20 of them there so that one person doesn't have to be a, yeah. a, a service worker. Yeah. I don't know if that's innovation. It can, uh, what I would like to see as far as innovation is little stuff. Like, I'd like to see us look, us, the U- people from the U.S., look overseas. Like, one of the things that I love when I'm overseas uh, going to movies is assigned seating to a movie. You know what I mean? In the States, it's every man for himself. Yeah. And uh, that that's not a technical innovation. That's just uh, one country does it and it works and we don't we do not do it. I, I, I'm surprised that we aren't looking to other countries for it, whether it be how does Denmark do transportation or how does this country uh, do uh, the, how their service workers, things like yeah. that, and then change the system for the better. Like, why don't we look to all the different countries that have things that work yeah. and then bring them over here. Yeah, I mean, but you know, you you see that from an American perspective and yeah, in a lot of things you're right, but I live in Spain and I see a lot of things like why don't we do, you know, like this is a solved problem in the US or this is a solved well, problem. Well, you travel a lot. Are there things that you can bring to Spain to change how things work there? Oh yeah, there's there, there's quite a few. <laughs> the yeah. beginning with the uh, I would say um, you know, um and you know my 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 uh, your Spanish audience and I, you know I've been living there thirty years so to all practical effects I, I consider myself Spanish right mm-hmm. but you know um, I think that as a tourist country that you know its primary thing is is tourism industry is tourism we should have a better idea of what service <laughs> is <laughs> um, so just starting by that um, the, the, and do you think that's something that that might sound like the podcast has taken a bit of a turn but wouldn't you say though that if if somehow service you know, quality service culture and pride and work at, uh, was ingrained in all of the different service workers of Spain. Then over a course of years, people would get the attitude like, man, Spain is so friendly and everyone is so nice and so kind. And then that all adds up to a better economy. 
Um, it's not that they're, no, I mean, don't get me wrong. Spaniards are unfriendly. Spanish are some of the friendliest people on world, in the okay. world and they're very caring. Um, I, but I've been there 30 years and I've seen the service in terms of customer service go from absolutely rubbish to, okay, we're eventually starting to get somewhere. Yeah. You know, I mean, until 10 years ago, you wanted to go return something. They're like, what? What do you mean return it? Yeah. I've got the receipt. What? I don't care. You got the receipt. You bought it. You left the mm-hmm. shop. It's over. So I think every country can learn from any, any other country, really. I don't, you know, I don't want to um, say that this is a problem that is unique to, uh, to a specific country. Well, yeah. Well, we're um, just using the examples because yeah. that's what we know. Um, but yeah. So, um, so I mean, to say basically what I'm just thinking is how I want to think about why and I want to think about how I can improve uh, help people that are not having a great time right now. Well, the things that I try to do, and I keep coming back because I have young kids, and uh, as I keep coming back to education and opportunity, um, I want as many kids or and, and or adults, people, to have an opportunity to find out what it feels like to build, to make. Yeah. I, I think we should have more makers yeah. and fewer consumers. I mean, consuming is fun. I love TV. I watch a lot of TV. But I'm a competent creator. And I think that uh, right now the ratio of creators to consumers is a little bit skewed. And I like the idea of taking someone who has absolutely no context about what a software engineer does and say, let's try to code something for an hour and then see if they get the bug. I'm not thinking that we're going to suddenly convert millions and millions of people. But from an opportunity perspective, you could take a an eight-year-old girl and she could go, I never thought about it this way. And then, boom, you've just created a software engineer. Or it could be a 65-year-old retired auto worker. And for some fraction of people, it's going to click. And they're going to go, whoa, I just found a new, I just discovered a new thing. I discovered that coding and creation is what I want to do. Yeah, yeah, yeah. From a creative point of view, I think that that's a, that's a, that's, that's a noble cause to do. But I, I'm personally, you know, while I think that ro- learning how to program and that is fantastic and I love it and I wish that my kids would program, you know, um, um, I think all of us as fathers dream that our kids come and say, Oh, look, dad, I just wrote this in JavaScript. <laughs> Not JavaScript, but I just wrote this. But, I don't think it's realistic to want every kid to program either. And I'm and, not saying that. Yeah. But I, it's, about, it's about opportunity. Like, for yeah. example, growing up, and, and this is kind of a little silly, but growing up, I never tried ballet. I don't know if I'm an expert ballerina. Yeah. That's a silly thing to say, right? But the point would be that you want your kids to have as many opportunities as possible to, to try, try different something. Things, yeah. And I was talking to a gentleman in Australia here, big kind of rugby-looking guy, Australian football rules type person, and he said that his son uh, is going to be a professional ballerina. And I shocked the heck out of me. And he said, well, yeah, he just, one day he saw it on TV and he says, I want to try that. We signed him up at the local thing. Four years later, he's like in Canada and he's te- learning at one of the greatest ballet Billy school. Elliot, right? Yeah, you know, it's like yeah. Billy Elliot. And it's just one of those things like you just never would have known. And there's some parallel universe out there where this individual, this little boy, never had that, that opportunity. And whether it be ballet or baseball or um, coding. Yeah. I, again, I don't think you're going to create a, a, a nation of coders. Yeah. We don't need a nation of coders no, either. But I, def- I definitely think that we need a nation of thinkers. Yeah. And definitely. I think coding is a great uh, on ramp to, yeah. to thinking and then bringing it around, uh, arguably a great um, on ramp to social change and to improving lives for people everywhere. Yeah. Kind of things like, you know, Khan Academy and Coursera and the, these are doing like, again, helping people that, you know, there are, do you, how many people in the US right now have debts because of what they had to pay for college education? I, I mean, it's, it's a it's, huge it's, number. Yeah, it's a huge number. Yeah. And if we're helping people get educated for free or at a very minimum cost, that again is helping those that are really in need. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. So I'm, I'm just saying that as software developers, I think it's time for us to a little bit think a little bit deeper about why we're doing certain things and how we can improve things for all i think i want to go i think i'll look on look online there surely must be a marketplace that connects charities who need help with coders to do it they've got the uh, you know the what do they call it these code camps not not the code camps the give camps they give, do yes, these exactly things right. once That's in a while I was remembering. Yeah. it's give camp but I, I think there are a couple. There is, there's actually, um, it was some of the .NET folks that did this site where you could, um, contribute to certain projects mm-hmm. that were, um, helping people in Africa and third world countries. So there, there should be. I mean, yeah, that's yeah. the thing. I found so many 
so many people doing things that help, but they don't get the coverage on TechCrunch and on Reddit and things. Yeah, it is, an, it is a shame. Someone yeah. gets a new A round of funding from a VC. And they get it's coverage. all over the place. And, and I think that there are, you know, there are people who are, who are doing good work. And I had a couple folks on the show, uh, that I'll put in the show links, uh, that are, are, are doing work and getting paid pennies for it, but it's moving society forward and yeah. they're using code to exactly. do it. And we should give them more coverage. We absolutely should. Yeah. Thanks so much, Heidi, for chatting with me today. Thank you so much. This has been another episode of Hansel Minutes, and we'll see you again next week. Mm-hmm.